Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Postmodern Art Podcast, the podcast dedicated to giving artists who are wowing the world over the platform they deserve. I am your host, Nathan Raglan, and boy, do we have a fun episode for you. Today, we have Kihori, a cleanup animator on Hell of a Boss, who's been the main thumbnail artist for YouTuber I Am Wildcat for years now. This was both an informative and entertaining chat for me, and I hope you get as much from this as I did and enjoy. Go check her out in the links below and support her all that you can. Also, like and share the podcast if you enjoy, subscribe if you want to enjoy more amazing guests, and comment your favorite moment below. Also, follow us on Twitter at PostModArtPod for future updates and guest announcements. And now, without further ado, please enjoy the Postmodern Art Podcast. So I know you said you hosted a podcast, but this is your, is this your first time appearing on a podcast? Yeah. Yeah? Awesome. Oh. <laughs> Well, up here in a podcast that is um, posted somewhere, <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Fair because enough. Because I had a friend, I had I had a friend who was just like, "Hey, we're doing our own podcast. Do you want to be our first guest?" I'm like, "Okay, sure." <laughs> there we go. Oh, by the way, just for the occasion, because I know we're gonna at least bring up the guy at least once. I was trying to find the shirt that I have, but instead, I have the next best thing. Boom. Oh. Yeah, I ha- I didn't uh, I, I wasn't able to get that actually. Right, the OG, and one. I'm sad. But <laughs> yep. I saw what was it on Twitter? You were like, you know, hey, doesn't deliver here at least with the gangster piggy one. But like, Wildcat got you the hookup. Yeah, <laughs> and like YouTube was like, well, okay, we're well, gonna give you this for free for free as a oh, gift wow. from Wildcat because I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like. Yeah, because I also want to get the van, also, you know, the gang, because, yeah, you know. Yeah. So they're like, I would still pay for that if it's okay. You can deliver it along with work. And they're like, okay, we'll okay. give you an invoice. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Those guys are just like cool on their end. Uh, straight up. I've been trying as hard as I can to get them on the podcast. Like, I really have. <laughs> yeah, they're very busy and also. Ah no, I'm not even sure because like there are also people who are like, "Hey, have your thumbnail artist on your podcast?" I'm like, "Yeah, I don't think he would do that." <laughs> it's very, mm, I, I want to say, I guess not exclusive, but eh, English is not my first language. Uh, no, so no, I don't I, know I, what's the proper English uh, correct word for that i was just gonna say in general i imagine at least on their end when it comes to like setting up stuff like that it's very chaotic because they gotta focus on a million different things more direct with what they gotta deal with than hopping on someone else's thing and being like hey so things are going awesome like they want to get their you know focus on their stuff so yeah 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 anyways where are my questions there we are oh why you have a list (laughs) i Look, the way I go about with this podcast is I have my questions here to where I have, like, the general roadmap. But if we go off track and talk about something else, that's perfectly fine. Like I said, at the end of the day, I want this to be nice, calm, casual, cool podcast more than anything. Just a conversation, more or less. Because I'm more or less asking you about, like, what you're passionate about more than anything else. I mean, the thumbnails and animation and all stuff like that, that's a passion you've probably had for years. Am I correct? (laughs) Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like I I I I'm more or less just letting you express yourself. So. Hey, go, go, go. <laughs> I'm just uh, really nervous and also you know. Hey, I'm like um, I hope I, I say things properly because again I'm Filipino. I'm not. Right, right. Um, I'm good at reading and like typing in English. It's just the words come. Out of my no, mouth. It's just not the words I wanted to. Trust me, I completely. Well, to be fair, understand. I'm not. I'm not also good in Filipino. <laughs> right, sorry. <laughs> so, what is your first language? Hieroglyphics or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could get on to that because, like, I get, apparently, Philippines has a lot of different language, and yeah. the normal Tagalog that the, everyone thought is is not my first language. Gotcha. It's uh, it's a different. It's not a dialect, but that language also has its own dialect, which is very confusing. So, okay. yeah. <laughs> duly noted. Duly noted. Um, 
No, it's one of those, like I said, more than anything else, I'm not overly stressed. Enough. Like, I'll tell you right now, you were literally the most international star I've had, or international guest I've had on the podcast. The closest I've had is I've had a couple guests from the UK. So I'm not exactly going to be stressing if, like, you mispronounce something here and there, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no problem, no problem. All right, Kiori, before we get started, I must ask the icebreaker question I ask for every single guest. What is your most unpopular art opinion? Oh, God. <laughs> I feel like my own unpopular art opinion is becoming more popular now these days. Okay. Hmm. So, like with the fan art and stuff. But I think one of the most still unpopular is people concerned about same face syndrome. Same face syndrome? Care to elaborate on that? Yeah, um, like, um, either artists or... Well, sometimes non-artists like complain like, "Oh, they look the same and stuff like that," okay. and and artists like has like that's their style. And they're they're all go panicking. It's like, "Oh no, I'm doing the same face syndrome. What do I, what should I do and stuff like that?" Like especially younger beginner artists, they tend to panic when people say, like, "Oh, they look they all look the same. You don't have very like different style on your on your characters." I'm like. Just let them be for now. They're still starting. Gotcha. And also, it's not really a thing. <laughs> like, have you seen Disney? Yeah, Have yeah. you seen Disney's character design? Come yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, is that something that you personally, like, had to deal with yourself, like, as you were developing as an artist? Is that something that, like, you look back on yourself and be like, yeah, I kind of did the same thing, or? Yeah, no, I... Uh, I think a few years back, like, I don't know, like, three to four years back, like, everyone was talking about same face syndrome, I'm like, mm. oh, no, I'm, am I also doing the same? And then, like, as the time goes on, it doesn't really matter. Draw whatever you want. There you go. I mean, at the end of the day, art is an expression, and if, you know, the same facial expression or same face helps get that expression across, why not at least starting out, so. <laughs> yep. But, uh, but, yeah, same face syndrome, is that a hill you're willing to die on? Yeah. Okay, then. Then with that... I'm just like, let everyone draw whatever they want and however they want. <laughs> and with that, I can't think of a better way to start the Postmodern Art Podcast. Welcome, everyone. I am your host, Nathan Raglan. Uh, feel free to subscribe on YouTube, follow on whatever streaming platform you prefer, uh, follow us on Twitter, at PostmodArtPod, for future updates and guest announcements, including today's guest... <clears throat> She is an animator who's worked on projects like the My Little Pony movie and Hell of a Boss. She is also the main thumbnail artist for YouTuber I Am Wildcat. Welcome to the podcast, Kiori. How you doing today, Kiori? Hello. <laughs> oh, God. You, you did research. <laughs> yeah, I did my research. I'm not just going to bring on someone and be like, yeah, so what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to sit down and uh, chat. I really do appreciate it. I'm glad to be here, and thank you for inviting me. Well, I, I wouldn't have it any other way, but before we get started on sort of the art that made your name, let's start with the origin story of Kiori. What got you interested in art and animation as a whole? Hmm, I think I was... Um, was I second year in high school? I think I was 14, yeah. I was like... Okay. I never thought of um, doing art as a career because, like, my parents already planned something for me because, you know, Asian parents. Mm. It, it was either I become an accountant or an engineer or something like that. And then I stumbled into Demet Art. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was, I can't even remember their names. They were just so passionate on um, about animation. And it's like, yeah, their drawings are so good. And it's like I could never draw like this during my time. And then it's like they were just almost the same ages around me. Mm -hmm. They were so passionate about animation. It's like yeah, I kind of want. It's like animation. Wait, that's a job. It's like wait, I could like oh, I could like work on Disney or something like that. There we go. <laughs> my teenager, my teenager ambitions. Like <laughs> yeah, it was like <laughs> like I mean. I'm not as good, but I think I can, like, I want to be good and stuff like that, so I started drawing. And my parents did not like, like they're like, to be an animator, they're like, what the heck is that? 
All right. Well, I mean, hey, I mean, what better way of, a, you know, better place to start than DeviantArt? Lord knows how many careers that alone has probably spawned. Uh, but for you, when did it go from just, like, a love for animation and a love for, like, you know, creating art to, like, potentially making it, like, a career for yourself? Like, when did it realistically become, like, your career path? Um, because I was, uh, young. <laughs> <laughs> naive teenager I was like yeah I really think I could make a career on this it's like I really wanted, wanted to push on studying animation when I was like around um almost graduating high school because mm -hmm. like during from that second year period that I just started like oh I could do like hmm, I really I was really cool and stuff and then going through that it's like I just like like read books, go to the internet a lot, like, um, uh, um, studying, searching other animators and stuff. And they're okay. like, like, yeah, their job is so cool. It's like, I, can't, I really want to make the same thing as them. And, and like, hey, um, I like drawing and stuff. Like, uh, why not? I mean, there we <laughs> but then go. my parents are like, yeah, my parents are like, no. <laughs> So, I like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I can only imagine the, the the parents' mentality with this entire stuff. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong. From what I'm hearing, are you self taught yourself when it comes to this stuff, or like, did you like at least do an upper education past that, or? I oh, yeah, here's the thing, cause like, um, I was about to apply for uh. Or like take a test on a college. Okay. That's uh, like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna going to be um, studying accountancy and become an accountant, and probably after that, like switch to lawyer and stuff, because that's kind of plan or something. Mm -hmm. And then I had this school in mind, cause that's the only school on that time that offered animation. Mm -hmm. And the bus, me and my parents were like taking drove through that school and then they're like oh hey isn't that that school you keep telling us about i'm like oh yeah it's here and they're like you know what fine we'll we'll stop by <laughs> and then we just drop <laughs> we stop by and then the school's like oh how do you find out find out about us it's like oh i was searching animation schools because i wanted to try animation and like okay we'll give you a free test then just because of that i'm like what <laughs> wow <laughs> and yeah, and um, I got in, and they're like, do you really want this? I'm like, yeah, because I think they noticed that I'm kind of eh and kind of depressed. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. And, the, and my mom's like, yeah, it's not fun if you're not if you're studying something you don't like. And it's like, if you study this, and if we're allowed you, you should, you know, give it your all. I'm like, okay. And I gave it my all. I studied animation. Um, uh, yeah, I studied Bachelor of Science in Animation and graduated as... Um, I don't know if you guys have this, like uh, Magna Cum Laude, which is like the second highest honor. I I mean, I'm sure we have stuff like that, but I don't think it's exactly what you said. I don't know what exactly it would... I, I Off the top of my head, I can't remember what exactly it's called over here. But I know what you're talking about. Like, not, like the top for a class over here would be, like, valedictorian. I don't know what the, mm -hmm. the second under would be for us. But there is definitely a title for it. Yeah, it's like, I got this. Like, I became a din lister. Like, I started really hard. And okay. And graduated second highest honor and nice. stuff like that. Well, I applaud you for that one. That that I imagine the the amount of hard work and dedication that had to go into that to to get that. Yeah. So, I I also had to be um, apply for scholarship because again they can't. Um, one of the things they also didn't want me is they can't afford it. I'm like, mm. okay, I'm gonna apply for scholarship, and I got the academics scholarship. So yeah. Nice. <laughs> I'm like, yay. Nice. That's good. Again, I applaud you. That that's very very good on your end. Um, before we really get to, before we really get into after college, I just have to ask this real quickly. What is an inspiration for your art style? For those that have seen your art style, they like, well, they can see it with your little profile picture right there, but like you have, uh, <laughs> what would you say like inspired you to have, to go with that as your main style? Uh, it's because I'm, um, <laughs> I'm very indecisive with art. Like mm -hmm. people 
uh, during that time, or I had like, yeah, during that time, they were always so focused on getting their own art style. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, kind of influenced, like, yeah, I don't have my own art style. It's like, hey, I like drawing in Disney, but I also like anime. There we go. So, like, yeah, back then, when I was just starting in college, like, I switched between Disney and anime, and my class was like, what the, what the fuck? How are you so flu- um, fluid in switching art styles? And like, because I'm an indecisive little shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that, especially whenever it gets you opportunities, <laughs> like, especially in animation, which is a good way to segue <laughs> to my next b- group of questions. How did you break in, into the animation industry as a whole? Like, what was, like, your first, like, opportunity to actually work for the business of animation? Um, well, before we got, uh, I, w- I interned, uh, at a studio because, mm. like, my school required to, but ca- ca- we kind of didn't really did animation that part. Just was, I, I was just a cleanup background artist. Okay. On, I think that, uh, what's the title of that Scooby-Doo that looks like Family Guy or something? Oh, uh, Be Cool Scooby-Doo, I think is what it's called. Yeah, it was like I was just a cleanup background artist on that part. Okay. Didn't really do any animation, and just like staple storyboards because they were so um, not like a lot of people, but they're just that studio didn't have a lot of equipment to give to um students or interns, so they're just like, ha, ah, you guys still need your hours and stuff, so you can do this and stuff. I <laughs> like I guess. But, but I didn't really work in that studio, and then my professor in college recommended me on a studio called Top Draw because okay. he was working there, and they're like, he was like to his higher ups like, yeah, I have students that I think are really good to be as rough animators and keep keep those artists. I'm like. And they recommended um, a few, a few of me and my classmates, okay. and yeah, that's that's uh, that's how I I guess got or like uh, got into the industry. Got <laughs> I got referred by <laughs> my professor. I mean, there is no shame in that whatsoever, especially whenever you worked on projects, like I said before, the the Milo Pony movie, uh, Pen Zero. There was one of those things like The Hollow or something like that. What was like the most memorable experience in like the early animation days, like when you were working on all these different projects? Ah, uh, yes, the early days where I'm still naive and gullible. <laughs> um, because uh, my experience in that studio was not good. Even my okay. um, my old my old professor, he he, um, my old professor. It's called. It's named Dave Romney, he ha- and he actually worked on Simpsons before he worked on that studio, and oh, now really? he's working again on Simpsons. Yeah. Oh wow. But yeah. Um. The first, the first uh, show I worked on that was um, Legend Quest, or we call it Leandas. Okay. And yeah, I was like, we, I was very excited because like, hey, it's my first show, and then it's like it's the first show that I actually have a credit. That is my name, even though it was just my nickname because they messed that up. Mm. It's still a credit. <laughs> and it was on Netflix. Like, yeah. Like, I was giving my all on that show and stuff, but then there's just. <laughs> so, there's just some. Not conflict, it's just like some directors or something. Like, they're just not us. Um, enthusiastic about me as my other classmates because gotcha. I'm a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, it was a very male dominant studio. Um, oh, it's like, like out of out of like ten directors, there was only one female director and stuff like that. Wow. So yeah, <laughs> I see that. And, um, Mm-hmm. I was going to say, um, as a matter of fact, because I remember seeing this stuff kind of on your Twitter, it's one of those, you had all these like early projects, but it eventually got to the point to where you had to take a three-year break from animation as a whole. What exactly led you to just sort of get away from the industry for a bit? 
It's because the industry here in the Philippines, like, I'm not just talking about my own studio, like, most studios, like, if not every studio, even the one that interned at, um, overwork their artists and their animators to the bone and doesn't even get much, um, salary or payment. Oh, wait, hang on. I think my dog wants to go out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, if you need to take a break to, to let him know, I understand. <laughs> And, um, anyway, back to the studio. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, like, my payment before was, like, around $50 a week. What? <laughs> Your face is just, like, when I said that. What? <laughs> yeah, you, you, Wait, wait, <laughs> time out. You're telling me with all the stuff that goes into that, that, you know, industry and all the, the hard work and labor, you were only getting paid 50 bucks a week? Yep. Um, it was lesser when I was just starting out. Cause they're like, even, even when I was starting out, they, they didn't pay me for like a, a few weeks into almost a month because they're like, oh, you're still an internship o o um, on the job, Chinese. And my professor was like, no, 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 they they can do work now. You should pay them. And if he didn't push for that, they probably would have paid me and um, my classmate for like another month or so. But yeah. Um, good lord I'm sorry but that's just that's just brutal with with everything that goes into that kind of stuff the fact that that was all you were making a week that's that's criminal right there yeah oh like we also work like regular hours is supposed to be 8 to 6 oh wait no 9 9 a.m. to 6 to 6 p.m. but we usually stay later like around uh, I think the latest we stayed was 2 a.m. because we had a deadline and some of like I remember weekends going there on weekends and Saturday and Sunday and we don't get overtime pay as well just for that are you shitting I'm sorry excuse my French are you shitting me <laughs> yeah that's um, one of the things stuff that happened that's why I left yeah but, you know what I don't blame you because that's that's just a load of crap right there that 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 wow wow yeah i think the highest pay i got in one week is how much is that in uh usd i think 200 dollars at most <sighs> and i had to um i had to you know yeah not no you know go home late and stuff because over time so i could just um like let out all these scenes because we have a quota. Oh yeah, I, oh yeah. I think I also did that thing. My PA told me, "It's like, hey, don't, don't. If you want more money, you could just not give your, your, your quota slip this week and just give it next week. So your seconds would add up because it t sometimes multiply. So I, that's how I get two hundred dollars in in a week for not having not having a salary the la that last week. <laughs> Jesus. I'm I'm sorry you had to deal with that. That yeah, I could see why you took a 3 year break f from all that stuff. That again, that's just criminal right there. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. I sincerely do. Goodness. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't fun. I'm like it it uh, made you know, it made my passion for animation became hatred for a bit. Yeah, like, I I no, I was going to say, I would hate it too. The thing that like, you know, you love so much and you like dedicate so much time and effort to get into and you're being freaking, you know, you're being basically, they're, they're messing with you. Basically they're, they're, they're teasing you. They're, I'm trying to think of the Ex word. They're ripping you off. They're exploiting. Trying. Exploiting. There exploiting. you go. Exploiting. Yep. <laughs> yeah. They were exploiting a lot of younger artists, like very like fresh out of graduate and they were really exploiting me and my classmates they're like oh yeah this this kids actually studied animation rather than having like trainees that are self-taught and stuff like that because most of their artists are also like self-taught or they train it themselves and and yeah and then they found out like oh yeah these are these guys studied and they actually are you know know what they're doing let's exploit them more jesus i again i I, I'm so I I want to say sincerely I'm sorry you had to deal with that that must be just 
I can only imagine mm-hmm. how that must have been for you, just like physically and mentally, more than anything else. Yeah, oh, I was as a YouTuber, I was in a dark place during that time. <laughs> <laughs> No. And, yeah, I, I couldn't even like. Uh, here's the thing that, um, well, I'm not the only one who did this anyway. way. Um, they usually give um, new new ones a two year contract, mm-hmm. so we can't leave unless it's the end of our contract. But like, I was a year and six months in. I just couldn't handle it anymore. I think I was working on. Um, Equestrian Girls. I wasn't even working on Equestrian Girls as a rough animator. I was like they were making me um, like using Flash and just you know posting the models. I was like I did not, mm-hmm. I did not um, apply for this job. Why am I here? I was just making my mood and mentality more of like okay. Yeah. It was just a lot of pressure and like. It was weird. It was a weird feel because, like, like, they compliment me, but at the same time, pressure that, um, hey, we want you to become a director. But I think I felt that they only said that because my friend that time, they wanted him to be the director, but they know he won't do it if, I, if I'm not there with him. Mm-hmm. Or something so they were like forced to invite me as well so that made my mood or like experience there a whole much shittier i'm like is it because i'm a girl or is like is he really just much better than me <laughs> i was like it questioned my abilities as an animator and an artist so i'm like if you don't want me just fire me but i'm like i, I know you won't fire me because you need me <laughs> yeah Fair enough. And again, I, I, like I said, I completely understand why you had to take a little break from that. But you've recently come back to it with work on the show A Hell of a Boss. How did that opportunity sort of come up for you? It was this year and I'm like seeing a lot of shows like Lack of Daisy and stuff. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, it's like I had some mutuals that work on us. Like, what? They asked for animators? Like, that's one of the comics that I really, I really like since high school. Oh really? And, okay. Um, like, uh, damn! I wish I could have um seen the application, but I did because I was too busy working on other stuff. Yeah. And um, and uh, my friend says like, oh yeah, I think Bibs is kind of looking for um, clean up animators. I'm like, Viv, Viv's your pop. Because I knew Viv, I think I, I was a fan of her since DeviantArt days. Again, going back to DeviantArt. She was one of the inspirations I had. I'm like, wait, Viv has a show? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, like, wow, this is cool. And then I found out about Addict mm-hmm. and stuff. I'm like, I really love that Um, I, I have the sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's, and I was I saying, it's, sorry, it's actually funny. I actually had Silverhound on the podcast a couple of weeks ago, so there you go. Oh, really? Yeah, really. It was it was a surreal experience more than anything else to have him on. So, yeah. Actually, um, before I continue, I okay. actually had to ask my friend to get to get the order for me because they don't ship to the Philippines. That's fine. The merch of um, Hell of a Boss and um, oh. Aspen Hotel. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I want it. It's like. Because I really love Attic um, music video, and then I watched the uh, pilot as well and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, they have merch, and then you know, shift in the film. God damn it! <laughs> this, I'm this, like, can you buy this for me? <laughs> does nothing ship over to you guys? Like, <laughs> I know it's a sad life. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You gotta deal with that. Uh... I, I got. Yeah, she shipped it for me, so like I was very happy. But yeah, um, what was I saying? <laughs> uh, but anyways, you were saying that you'd watch uh, like Attic like several times over. So yeah, I got it. I'm like, boy, I'm like, hmm, it would be very fun to um work on this show, and I like I really want to get back into animation. It's also because of um watching Rise of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Yeah, the newest one because their, their animation was. Chef's kiss. Yes. Wow. yes it was. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, 
Oh, I'm like, oh man, I miss, I'm missing working on animation and working with people in a team. Mm. And then, yeah, it's like, I saw Vim, it's like, yeah, we're looking for cleanup animators. I'm like, actually, I, I applied for animator, mm-hmm. but then I was, I, I know I'm like, I probably won't get animated because I'm so rusty for, you know, after <laughs> almost three years of not working. So, uh, like, like fully on animation and like, yeah, they're like, hey, we're also looking for cleanup if you want. Cause like we we need they they're like we need more clean cleanup actually than animators. I'm like, yeah, I'm okay with cleanup. <laughs> sure. There we go. And I want to say, so far from what I've seen from your cleanup animations, you've done an amazing job so far. Especially what was it with the most recent episode? I saw that you did cleanup for basically the the baby Octavia scene, which was just so perfect. I love that little sequence. I appreciate the work you guys did on what you did on it as well with seeing the little cleanup and such. It was again chef's kiss. Just <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I wish I could have done more because I had some scene that I had to give up give up okay. because. <laughs> um yeah because like i had other work i was like yeah I, I can't finish this and there's a deadline i yeah. was like i like if you guys really need to be, this thing to be finished i'm okay with you guys giving it out to someone else fair enough it was also yeah it was also the time that i moved to a new place and mm. that time and also the time that um Philippines got hit but I don't know, seven hundred typhoons, so the power and the internet just went out and can't work. Yeah, that would certainly, you know, mess up everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not gonna finish this in time. Right. Um, but yeah, I mostly usually supposed to get all of the most of not all, not but most of Octavia shot there, but yeah, like I mean baby Octavia. Yeah. The first, uh, the first few shots, but yeah, I had to give them up. Oh. Well, I mean, even then, okay. uh, I was gonna say, even then, the the work that you did do on it, it was absolutely wonderful. How has it been for you working with the staff and working with Viv to to create that vision and bring it to life? Um, so far so good. I I haven't really talked much like with everyone because. I feel intimidated and shy at the same time. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like, oh, the newbie, I'm like, yeah, I should, like, you know, insert myself there. Also, I'm just not very good with uh, interacting with people that that I don't know much yet and they don't know much me about yet. Mm-hmm. So I'm just can of get nervous and shy and just, like, stay away like like my friend who um did some story work from the lucky jack um episode of them right she's like you're just like she's like just jump into the voice chat i'm like i'm scared <laughs> <laughs> just say hello i was like okay <laughs> 10 minutes later i still haven't joined the voice chat oh <laughs> Well, I mean, I can, I, again, I can sort of understand where you're coming from, especially, you know, just working with, like, this incredible crew and for you yourself being a little rusty with that, you know, because you haven't worked on it in a while, on animation in a while. I can understand where you're coming from on that. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just, like, intimidated and nervous at the same time. Mm. <laughs> and I'm like, eh, eh. But but overall, it still must be like it, it must be like a surreal experience for you because, like you said, you admired like you know Vizzy Pop and all the stuff that she did like leading up to all you know the creation of her show and such. So I can only imagine just how much of like whoa, this is this is my life now. <laughs> it must be for you. Yeah, it is. Like, yeah, I was just a I was just a bystander before. I was like, I, I didn't even know when I started following her on DeviantArt before. Mm. And then now I'm working on her show, and I'm like, damn, this is so cool. Yeah. Trust me, I, I can only imagine where you're coming from. So, again, you got all this stuff going on with animation and all that. But, of course, like I said, there was a three-year gap. It's not like you really sat down and did nothing for those three years. As a matter of fact, a lot of people, if they know you better, they, they'll know that you're – well, they'll not predominantly know you for your thumbnails. How, did you, how exactly did you get started into creating thumbnails? Okay, <laughs> this is also connected on when I um, left my studio. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I forgot. I actually went AWOL from my studio with a two-year contract. Oh really? And stuff. Yeah, because they didn't allow 
oh, you can't quit because you have two-year contract. I'm like, then I'm not gonna go to work then. <laughs> okay, fair. Yeah, like, they won't give me my contract, actually, just so I could, like, hire a lawyer for me to just able to quit properly, but... Okay, I'm just gonna go AWOL. Go yeah. fire by me! I mean, it's not like but, I mean, it's not like you're losing that much money. You weren't making that much in the first place, so... That's true, but they were threatening... <laughs> They were just threatening me to like, oh, you're gonna get blacklisted and you're not gonna be able to work on other studios anymore. But the funny thing is, um, I wasn't the first one to do that, and they yeah. still work on other studios. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's um, during that time where I'm just very down on working on top on my old studio, Top Girl, I saw uh, my friend recommended me Vanos. Okay. And like, hey, you you like owls? Uh, um, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, why don't you watch him? Like, you watch other YouTubers like Markiplier, Jack Sex again. I'm like, yeah, I don't really have time to watch that. And then I actually did give them a chance. And it's like, oh yeah, the content is actually very great. And then I started, it just started um, making fan art. And then okay. I didn't even know a thumbnail, thumbnail artist is a job that I could do. Because I saw, um, I saw Big Jiggly Panda's thumbnail artist followed me on Tumblr. Okay. And like, yeah, and they're like, oh, wait. Well, he, she was Daidi Nogla's thumbnail artist back then. Oh, But now okay. she's Big Jiggly Panda's. Gotcha. So, okay. <clears throat> yeah, um, I think you know um, Little Hypno? Yes, yes. I, I've, I've sent an email to them trying to get them on the podcast, but I imagine with a million different things going on for them, they haven't really noticed. I would love to have her on the podcast, but... Oh, yeah. She's fun. <laughs> I can imagine. But anyway, so she, so she followed you on Tumblr, correct? <laughs> yeah, she followed me on Tumblr, and I'm like, yeah, she's a Tumblr. I was like, wait, I'm like, what the heck is a thumbnail artist? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like you know, doing those storyboards stuff, because that's the only thumbnail artist I know. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, YouTube thumbnail artist. Wait, that's a job. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and as a fan back then because I was still working on town, I was like yeah I could like it would be fun to um, at least draw one for them they don't even need to pay me it would just be very happy for them to use my art okay and stuff and then after I uh, but yeah I was just making fan art then and stuff after after I quit my studio, I went AWOL, which was like the first week of December. Mm -hmm. I was very sad. I was like, oh no, I don't have money. And then I saw Nogla um, tweeted like, hey, I'm going to have a thumbnail contest and stuff. And like, and it, and yeah, they're surprised. Like, I'm going to pay for you. I'm going to pay you for it. I was like, oh, cool. I can't. I'll, I'll make a thumbnail then. It's like I really need the money. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm like, I'm like, um, I was mostly focused more on the money during that time rather than just having them, um, using my art because, yeah, I didn't have a job. Right, right. And it's like, yeah, I submitted my work, and then the winners haven't announced, has, hasn't even announced yet. Then that's when Wildcat. Tyler messaged me and it's like, hey, I saw your submission for Nogla. Do you want to work for me in the future, maybe? I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> it's like, bro, 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 one of my favorite YouTubers? Yeah, I would love to work for you. Uh, oh, trust me. I, I would be in the same, you know, boots, you know, same shoes as you if I could only just get an opportunity to even just talk with one of my favorite YouTubers and all that, you know, kind of stuff. So I can only imagine how much of... <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys! Like, uh, <laughs> hey guys! Yeah. Hey guys! Welcome to the Wildcast here. No, I'm joking. <laughs> welcome to the Wildcast. <laughs> so, yeah, this, like, this, sorry, this episode is sponsored by Manscaped. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> man, they're gonna talk about something inappropriate. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <you> go. <laughs> Anyways, no, but like I said, I can only imagine how much of a like how how like surreal was that for you just kind of not just like having one of the your favorite people that you love watching just comment to you and be like hey i want to work with you <laughs> yeah i was just like i'm like i i was like i know my 2017 was shitty but this is such a good end to it yeah <laughs> <laughs> it was like get to message me right before new year's eve okay <laughs> 
I'm like, oh, damn. And then, oh, wait, no, he messaged me in the morning, I think, of New Year's. Oh, wait, no, I think it was New Year's Eve. And then the next day, Nogla was like, or like a few hours later, actually, Nogla was like, hey, you're the first, um, you're the first, um, first place winner. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, and he said that, um, the guy, the ones who actually judge your thumbnail contest are the other guys, you know, the other, the other members of the, of the gang. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no wonder, um, Wildcat or Noticed. Tyler found out. Yeah, I noticed. Because, like, yeah, there, there were the judges, uh, and they, he said, your colors pop up the most, and that's why we're, that's why you won. And yeah. he's like, and I used your thumbnail. I was like, yeah, bro, you paid for it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, that made me very happy, like two in one go. There we go. <laughs> um, I have to ask, for you, how has it been like working with Wildcat in order to, to create these, you know, incredible and sometimes very random thumbnails? How has it been for you working with him to bring that stuff to life? Oh, it was so great. It was in, um, like even just when I just started working for him, because mm-hmm. again, I started working for him for um, 1st of January. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there's this little um story actually. I don't know if you follow me back then when I was just starting, but I doubt you do. <laughs> you do. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was just starting, and then like he asked for a thumbnail, but th- back, but that time my laptop broke down, so I'm like, oh, I can't do thumbnail for for you, you know, while because my laptop broke, and he hasn't replied. And then the next day, he's like, can I just buy you a laptop? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> Man, I would kill for someone to pay for a laptop to me. Hey, hey, Tyler, you, you pay attention to this, right? <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I was like, bro. I, I actually denied his offer at first mm-hmm. because I'm like, I don't think I deserve this. I I only started working recently for you. There are there are other artists who work for him longer than me. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, yeah, it's fine. And then my friend and family, what the fuck are you doing? Accept the offer. <laughs> <laughs> like you need it anyway. I'm like, okay, fine. I'll message him again. I'm like, yeah, I changed my mind. <laughs> like, he's like, okay, awesome. I just really want to help you get back to drawing, and like. Like you can just, you know, you can just give me free thumb, like a few free thumbnails. Like he he only gave me like a small amount. I'm like, like, and then he gave me like you can do like six free thumbnails. And like I'm like, what? No, I can do ten. Fine. <laughs> and he's, and he's, he's like, fine, let's do it at eight. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Uh, I mean that that has to be that I mean that's cool more than anything else. I mean you know seeing you know someone like that because I I imagine with a lot of like bigger you know big name YouTubers like if they have the opportunity to I can imagine some of them will just I I don't want to say take advantage but like they'll they'll use what they can to get what they want more than anything else. But Tyler seems like one of the most like one of the more honest guys out there. So I imagine for you again it must be just kind of surreal for basically to deal with this guy that a lot of people look up to. And he's just, you know, giving you the basic human decency more than anything else. Yeah, I'd say he's very genuine. And again, you said honest and stuff. Because, like, like, because, of course, like, um, inflation exists. So it's like I had to ask for a raise. Mm -hmm. And he gave me more than I asked. I'm like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) So, like, yeah, I'm very happy to, like, that I got a chance mm-hmm. to start working for him because, like, he's the best boss I could ever ask for. There we go. Yeah, it's like, uh, like if, if I asked for a break, he would just like, okay, sure, get better soon and stuff like that. And yeah, <laughs> like, like he would like sometimes give me a little Christmas. Well, not little for my end, but that's Philippine currency. But yeah, um, when he like he gave me um, uh, um, Christmas like my first Christmas like bonus for him, I'm like, 
Bro, okay. I don't even get Christmas bonus from my old studio. <laughs> <with the fuck? laughs> oh, that. <laughs> Again, I can only imagine how that must be mentally for you. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Yeah, it's like everything just was just overwhelming for me and stuff like that. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good to hear. Uh, I have to ask. I mean, with with, I imagine at this point with hundreds of thumbnails for the guy, what has been your personal favorite one that you've made for him? Oh God, <laughs> I don't even know. It's like I'm over six hundred thumbnails for him now. <laughs> six hundred. Goodness, I didn't realize it was that much. Good lord. <laughs> Uh, to be fair, I would have even have more if I didn't get sick or take a break sometimes. Cause like, I mean, life happens. Yeah. Like back when I just started working for it, like I think there was like two to three months of just me continuously doing thumbnails for him. Mm-hmm. Like not 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 a day of having a break. Cause I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I want that grind. Yeah, fair enough. But, damn. I- I don't know which ones are my fave. Is or, or I, if not at least fave, is there like one that you think of as like this, like either a funny story behind me? What is like the most memorable thumbnail for you? Do you know? <laughs> oh, um. The laugh scares me, but I'm intrigued. <laughs> there was. I actually tweeted about this um okay. one of my search history, or actually not search history. It was one of my tabs. I clicked on one of my tabs and I searched for like excuse for um inappropriateness or NSFW. I searched for modern warfare butt plug because this was one of his descriptions for a thumbnail. I'm just like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, does modern warfare have a butt plug? <laughs> <laughs> And like I have to search it up. I'm like, <laughs> and it's like, oh wait, no, no, it's not an actual butt plug. I'm like, bro, you said the butt plug. What does it should I? Would I search or draw? <laughs> uh, yeah, your future results must have been interesting for you after the fact. <laughs> yeah, and there was also like um him moaning during Uno and everyone. Yeah. I. I- so everybody in the comments thirsting for it. I'm like, my God, why? <laughs> and and people at me on Twitter is like, how did you feel drawing this? I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I had to draw my boss like this. How do you think I'm doing mentally? <laughs> uh I mean, I'll tell you right now, those are definitely good ones to come to mind. One of the more memorable ones, at least for me, like most recently, that I want to applaud you for, the fact that you made Nogla a butt wart for the Among Us thumbnail. That one is just hilarious, all right? (laughs) To be fair, it wasn't my idea. It was uh, Nogla's thumbnail. Tyler says, I want the exact same thumbnail in this one. I'm like, (laughs) this is so weird. Why? And then you see the video and you're like, oh, okay. Still weird, but okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I can say, like, sure. <laughs> and then there was a bunch of modern water with all the butts showing. I'm just like, yeah. Ah, yes. Shiny butts. Yes, this is the. Um, this is my legacy in this, in this <laughs> job. <laughs> It's like you, you, it's like we get to the point to where like you know you have your obituary one day and be like you know she was just a, a talented animator a wonderful thumbnail artist she knew how to do just the perfect butt. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's like yeah, just and I don't show me draw me pooping. I was like showing someone showing their butt to my mom. Like, <laughs> I'm like Tyler. What? <laughs> That I'm sorry, I just realized that that must be like a weird thing for you because it's like you don't see like any you don't see any of the videos or any like clips from it beforehand, do you? It's just one of those like Tyler comes to you and is like, I want this as a thumbnail, and you just have to go with it, right? Yeah, it's, it's um, it's like people ask me, it's like, hey, do you it's like do you watch the videos? Like, I mean, he sometimes gives me videos like, here as a reference, mm-hmm. but most of the time I don't. I'm like, I don't get the videos and. People think that's like, 
uh, one of the um, they think that I would get them, and it's like one of those. Uh, what's that word? Like, not bias. <laughs> Uh, one of the co uh, pros, one of the pros of being a toner is to get to watch their videos earlier than you do, than others do. I'm like, no, right. no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I would get unedited, unedited clips of like uh, an hour long session. <laughs> dang, that that must be, that must be something for you. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't have time to watch all of this. <laughs> Uh, I mean, goodness. I mean, you know, even with like the clips and stuff like that, with all the stuff that you've done for Wildcat with the butt plugs and the butt warts and the perfect butts. Tyler's really <laughs> just, obsessed with butts, aren't you? Just butts. Just, just butts. <laughs> Everything's just butts. <laughs> Everything is just butts. <laughs> Ty freaking i i'm waiting for one day in the future to where i like i'm sure tyler will make this reference but like you have to make a thumbnail to where like okay so here's what i need you to do i need you to make me the butt bandit and you have to be like I i'm sorry huh <laughs> what <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> there, there was i i can't remember what um, I know there was that one thumbnail that that, that that was so weird to me when he described it, and I'm just like, "Can I quit?" And he's like, "Please don't quit." <laughs> <laughs> like, my, like it was just so weird for me. I'm like, "It's like what the fuck? Can I?" <laughs> I'm like, "Tyler, can I quit?" He's like, "Please don't quit." <laughs> I'm like, "I don't want to draw this." <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, at least he's making sure that you're paid well to draw this weird shit, so... Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness. I, I did not expect... I, like, I knew this was going to be a fun chat, but I did not expect to laugh as much as I've had. <laughs> I, I, I... <laughs> um, uh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, so... Deep breath. Let's get back to reality for a little bit. So, so with all this stuff with Tyler and all this animation stuff that you're really getting into, I have to ask, what has been like the most surreal or the most unbelievable moment for you as a whole, like working in these industries? Um. Hmm. <laughs> oh, wait. I. Because I'm like, I was gonna say, hey, I got to work on a feature film, but I didn't get that. Excuse me. No, you're good. My experience there, my experience there wasn't that great either. So I'm like, <laughs> ah, hmm. Like, what has there ever been a moment? Has there ever been a moment where you just like had to sit down and be like, "This is my life. How did I get here? What did I do to deserve this? Like, I, you know, this is like it's it's weird that I get to do this kind of stuff. Or it's awesome that I get to do this stuff. Oh yeah. Oh, that was. I guess when I got my first um like uh Christmas bonus from Tyler, I'm like, bro, like, do I deserve this this uh, and stuff? And I'm like, I don't think I did much to deserve this, and and like I, cause at that time I I like I I gave up on my passion and stuff mm -hmm. and stuff like that just to be a thumbnail artist, but then. Everyone kept saying, no, you deserve it. You've been working hard. Was, but in my mind, I'm like, this is just so surreal, though. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and people liking my art and liking my art on, uh, like, people commenting in the thumbnails, like, oh, the, uh, in the co uh, people commenting, yeah, commenting about the thumbnails mm -hmm. in the in the video comments. I'm like, oh, people like, like it? Because I for I for one um still iffy about my art. It's like that's one of my um new year solution this year. It's like to I accept compliments more and to accept that I'm actually good at art or something. Because <laughs> I I don't I have the very low self esteem and stuff like that. <laughs> and yeah, I had some friends <laughs> that scolded me. It's like no, take my compliment or I will smack you or something. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah. 
I well, I'll tell you what. I'll help with that New Year's resolution and start by saying real quickly. I I want to say I personally love seeing like the thumbnails that Wildcats have. Like I said, I've been watching his stuff for years now, and like whenever I was whenever I was setting up this podcast, like one of the things I wanted to do is like give more of a spotlight for you know. Uh, illustrated thumbnails because I feel like a lot of people don't give enough credit to that because for a lot of people that's their first impression of a YouTuber like seeing that thumbnail no matter what it is and so seeing like the time and effort that you put into that kind of stuff in order to create like this you know incredibly either like you know well done or like this obscure and random reference that people are gonna <laughs> like go forward and click onto that like I, again, I applaud you for that because it's it, it's very well done and it, it's one of the the best things about Wildcat's channel, other than his content. The fact that he's the, that you know, with every thumbnail, like it, it's a good sort of window to what you're expecting. So I think you captured sort of the element of what he's trying to go for, and then some. And for that, I say thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, that made me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I have to ask. Uh, let's. Let, let's let's come up with a little dream scenario here, shall we? Um, let's mm -hmm. let's say I mean again, you're getting back to that love for animation and stuff. Um, let's say I'm an executive that has access to everyone in the industry or access to whatever resources that you want. What would be the dream Kiori animation project? Dream Kiori animation project. Mm -hmm. Oh. It would probably be um, either directing my own show or movie okay. that that's mostly have like um, POC or Filipino artists that I'm no uh, that I've known or friends with that I know that could do very good work because one of the things that artists here is they don't they don't get much job opportunities in like in the US because mm -hmm. it for them it would be a hassle to sponsor even though they're really good it would be a hassle to sponsor them and to move them to California or Los Angeles or wherever that um, um, project would be right so I was like I would have would love to have a show or a movie that's like most of my staff and artists are just Asians or POCs. Okay. Is there a, a project that you've had that you would like to like bring to life that would be based on that? Like, do you have like some like concept or something that you've been brewing up for years? Cause I know you said you were part of DeviantArt. So I can only imagine, you know, some of them like, <laughs> this is, I can only imagine like you've had ideas that you've put out on there or have you, is that something that you need time to like think of yourself? I mean, I have original characters. I have OCs, but okay. I haven't really fleshed out their story and stuff like that. Okay. But yeah, it would, it would be pretty cool if they have their own animated show, but I'm still not like, you know, I'm not on that stage that I would want them to have a show. Okay. But if if it's like someone else's um like stories and stuff, I would really love to either direct that or it's like, you know, here, I recommend other artists cuz like they're talented and they don't get much opportunities because they live in a third world country. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, I know we had that little dream scenario, but now let's think a little bit further. What not? Where do you hope to see yourself say five, 10 years from now? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, I don't even know what to do tomorrow. <laughs> but, you know what? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> but, hmm. I don't know. Maybe, hopefully, doing my own project, I guess. Like, how Viv is doing with her own. Mm -hmm. But, again, I don't have stories or characters that, have, that I want to make. Or something. Though, I also wanted to make my own um, video game. That would be fun. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So, yeah. And, I mean, you know, you say, you know, you don't have your own stories or characters, stuff like that. But, like, you know, with Vivzy, like, she's been developing these, you know, has been characters for, like, what, eight, ten years or something like that? And, I mean, now she's only getting the opportunity to really showcase them to the world. So, I mean, I think it's possible. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, 
Like I was surprised, like with, uh, when I saw the has been hotel pilots. Like, mm-hmm. huh, I wonder why she didn't go with um, Zoophobia. Yeah, yeah. Except for the fact that there's like a lot more invested in that because in that like over like what three hundred page comic or something like that. Am I right in thinking that or am I? I I have I don't even know anymore because like <laughs> like I stopped reading it when I got into college because I didn't have time anymore. Right. To read it, but yeah, it was a long comic. I don't even know what's the what's the ending for it and stuff like that. Fair enough. I'll say, to, uh, you know, to be fair, I didn't even know about uh, like I knew of Vivzi. I remember the the Die Young music video that she made with like the Blue Wolf from Zoo uh, Zootopia. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember seeing that and like had totally forgotten. And like every once in a while, I'd like pop back in the feed and I watch it. And then I'd see like you know a teaser for this, like for Has Been, all this kind of stuff like that. And that got me invested in like whenever the trailers and like the sneak peeks were coming out and stuff. Like that's whenever I was really invested. I was never on DeviantArt, so I can't really attest the same love and passion that a lot of people do for her so <laughs> yeah so yeah i'm like yeah all right all right I'm it. <clears throat> i was gonna say so but with that i have one last question for you um obviously mm-hmm. you know you're you're heavily invested in art you know at this point how important is art not just for you but for the world as a whole oh i think it's very important it's like everything like deciding a building deciding an ad deciding what's going to be the billboard and like art is everywhere but people don't give appreciation much for it like they would just like either not give artists that much money and then like if, like, if artist gives them the price like what it's, like your art doesn't work that much i'm like what? so i'm like for me, seeing those messages all the time on Twitter, I'm like, I can't, like, I I wish people know how art is important. Like, again, even just like Discord, someone like did the logo, someone did the the preface of it, and how it would look and be more accessible for people and it's like hey this is where gonna be the members are these are the servers even just twitter's logo i'm like art is everywhere and art is very important and i'm just like i don't know if the world would be very colorful without art and artists yeah that's that's a very good point i can only imagine i can only imagine what the world would be like without art but at the same time like you said it, it's it's integral uh, you know for the world to have art more than anything else so, but with that, I'm all out of questions. So that, <laughs> that was the last question I had. So, um, I just want to say real quick, I know I already said a little bit of praise, but I'm gonna shower you with a little bit more. Um, <laughs> I, I, like I said before, you know, it, it's incredible to see the work that you're doing with, uh, Tyler and such. And I've always admired that and seeing, you know, especially now after hearing your story, seeing how like you had so much, you know, hope and passion for animation you know, falling out of it because of how you were treated before and seeing you get back into it before. Like, if nothing else, I consider that very inspirational. And I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to to sit down, tell us, you know, tell me, you know, tell the story of, like, your career at this point. And not, you know, whether it be, you know, working for Tyler for the next 20, 30, 50 years, something like that, or whether, you know, you go on to bigger, better things with the animation, maybe even making your own Disney movie one day. I really cannot wait to see what's <laughs> next, and I really do hope for the best for you. So, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. I, I've had a blast more than anything else, so thank you. <laughs> uh, go ahead and plug yourself That's for the people at home. Too. That's good. I'm glad you did. Go ahead and plug yourself for the people at home. Um, I uh, can follow me at Kihori Twitter. That's Kihori double R. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I also have an art YouTube channel which I post speed paints. I wanted to post. I I wanted to start posting animatics there more. I just need the time to do them. <laughs> Fair enough. Because <laughs> t- time is my enemy right now and stuff. Oh, I can only so, imagine. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think, I think my YouTube is also Kihori, just Kihori with the normal Kihori without an extra R, 
And I also sometimes stream on Twitch. There you go. While doing thumbnails. It's also Kihori. Yay! <laughs> If nothing else, don't worry. I'll be make sure that if you guys are interested, the the links will be down in the description below. Um, Kiora, do you have any final words before we sign off? Um, I hope everyone has a has a good day or great week, and stay awesome. Stay awesome. And with that, all I have left to say is, "Hasta luego, amigos." Yeah.